Applying the Socratic method during a lecture. An EMS professional must be able to analyze a patient's condition both rapidly and effectively. The Socratic method helps to develop these critical thinking skills and, in turn, improve the quality of patient assessment and management in the field. Consisting of probing questions, the Socratic method requires instructor skill and experience to keep the discussion on track. With the Socratic method, you will ask guiding questions that you have determined in advance of the class. With the Socratic method, the student's answer is as important as the question. The answer will determine which question you should ask next. Remember to allow for sufficient time for students to think of an answer. Do not be afraid of silence. Give the students the opportunity to consider the answer. Resist the urge to jump in and answer your own question. You want to show your students that you are interested in what they have to say. By answering your own question, you are indicating that you do not have the time to wait to hear what they have to say. If the student is silent after you ask the question, you could rephrase it and ask it again. If the student is still unable to answer the question, ask another student to answer the question. The key is to keep your students involved. The quality of the answers is dependent on the quality of the questions. Socratic questions are focused and designed to elicit specific information. Examples of Socratic questions include, what is the evidence behind your diagnosis? If you perform that procedure, what will the outcome be? Could you explain how you came to that diagnosis? Let's watch the Socratic method in action. The Socratic method in action. Evidence. Assessment and treatment decisions are based on evidence presented by the patient. One way to apply the Socratic method is to ask students about the evidence that led them to come to their conclusions about a diagnosis or treatment plan. This technique is especially useful in correcting an incorrect diagnosis. Interesting, what is the evidence behind your diagnosis of pneumonia? Well, the patient presents with weakness, fever, and chills combined with their two-week cough and the frigid weather conditions, it has to be pneumonia. I understand what led you to that conclusion. What other symptoms would you assess to confirm your diagnosis of pneumonia? Your goal is not to point out the student's error. It is to guide the student to the correct answer. First, ask the student to give the evidence behind the diagnosis. The student's answer will show you how the student reached the incorrect conclusion. Once you know how the student reached the incorrect conclusion, you can take the student back a step in the decision process and place the student back on the path toward the correct answer. The key to this technique is patience and encouragement. Encourage the student with smiles and affirmations. If a student lists all of the symptoms of a disease except for the one you are looking for, you could say, that's right. Is there anything else? If a student draws a blank or cannot give you the correct answer, ask a prompting question that will coax the correct answer from the student. For example, if you want the student to make a connection between the patient's skin condition and possible diagnosis, you could ask, in a patient with your diagnosis, what would you expect the condition of the skin to be? The Socratic Method in Action Outcomes it is imperative that EMS providers know what the outcomes of their actions will be. For example, an EMS provider must know the desired effects and potential side effects of a medication given to a patient in anaphylactic shock. One way to apply the Socratic method is to ask students to think about and explain what the outcomes of their assessment or treatment plans will be on the patient. Can you tell me how epinephrine will affect the patient in anaphylactic shock? It will increase the patient's blood pressure, heart rate, and increase bronchodilation. Good. Are there any other consequences? Your goal is to ensure that the student knows how the patient will respond to a medication and how to react to the various possibilities. The key to success is persistence. Keep asking questions until you have confirmed that the student is familiar with the expected response to a treatment and is prepared to deal with the common side effects. In addition to reinforcing critical concepts, this technique also hones critical thinking skills. It reminds students to think two or three steps ahead. To be a great EMS provider, it is not enough to simply think, I need to administer this medication now. The student needs to be thinking, I need to administer this medication to treat this problem. When I do, I expect to see this desired effect and want to monitor for the potential side effects. If side effects occur, I will take these steps. 
To ensure that the entire class remains engaged, bring other students into the discussion. This strategy is also helpful if the primary student is not able to answer all of your questions completely. Having another student prompt the primary student's memory is more effective than if you simply give out the answers. Finally, summarize the discussion. The students have just been bombarded with information, some of which may have been in the form of incorrect answers. By summarizing the information, you are reinforcing the correct information and emphasizing key concepts. The Socratic Method in Action Clarity EMS providers need to be able to explain how they reached a patient's diagnosis and the rationale behind the patient's management. It is key to have the students explain their rationale, whether they have the correct or incorrect diagnosis. Another way to apply the Socratic method is to ask students to describe the thought process behind the patient assessment or management process. Okay, can you tell me how you determined the patient's diagnosis? The patient was complaining of chest pain, so that helped narrow down the possibilities. I asked the patient to describe the chest pain, and she described it as a dull, moderate pain. She also complained about having a dry cough. Then I, um... Okay, dull chest pain and a cough, those may be associated with pericarditis, but there are other diagnoses too, such as myocardial infarction, pneumonia, pulmonary emboli. They have similar symptoms. How did you rule them out? Properly diagnosing a patient requires more than simply memorizing which symptom goes with which diagnosis. It also requires critical thinking, deduction, and analysis. To test and sharpen these skills, you may ask a student to walk you through the patient assessment process. It can be difficult to provide a narrative of the internal dialogue of the mind, so provide prompts such as, what did you find during the physical exam? Or, what did you do next? If you feel that the student is simply having issues putting answers into words, consider summarizing the student's last statement and providing prompts. For example, listing the possible differential diagnosis and asking how the student would rule each out. You may also ask about the pathophysiology of the problem. Thinking about what is happening in the body may help the student to work through the process as well. Remember, patience and encouragement are the keys to success with these techniques. Helpful Hints Keep in mind that the Socratic method may be frustrating to students who do not know the answer to the question. To keep those students engaged, try rephrasing the question or provide an example. Encourage these students to persist in the attempt to answer the question. Referring the students to their textbook or appropriate resources is often helpful. Finally, never disparage a student who is attempting to answer your question. If the student does not give you the answer that you are looking for, redirect the question to point the student towards the answer. For example, if the student gives you an incorrect diagnosis, you may list the signs and symptoms that would point the student toward the correct diagnosis. Remember, the Socratic method helps to develop stronger critical thinking skills in students. Using the Socratic method, the instructor asks students guiding questions. To apply the Socratic method in the classroom, ask students about the evidence behind their conclusions. Ask students to explain the outcomes of their actions. Also, ask the students to describe their decision-making process. If a student gives an incorrect answer, don't disparage the student. Redirect the question towards the right answer. And also remember, do not answer your own question.